Hi, welcome to this piano tutorial on Chopin's Nocturne in E flat major, Opus 9, number 2. In this tutorial, we're going to work on gaining a deeper understanding of the music, on interpretation, playing musically, and with my pro tips and advice, let's upskill your playing and listening experience. was written in 1831 and Chopin dedicated it to Marie Pleyel. She was a renowned concert pianist of his time. It's written in simple binary form. So this means we have an opening statement or theme, so theme A, and this repeats and is contrasted with theme B throughout the piece. I'll mark the A and B and where they happen on the score. Um, each time theme A or theme B comes back, it's developed almost like a theme and variations with ornamentation, with chromaticism. We'll see that as we look through the piece. And we, we end with a coda and right at the end, even a little cadenza. So let's get to it. The first thing we must remember when we play as pianists any of Chopin's melodic writing is to remember that Chopin's greatest love was the opera, singers, bel canto, the opera of his day. You can hear some now. I'll also link a video to more interesting information about Chopin and the opera. All of his melodic writing on the piano could be an aria. It is like a song without words. In fact, we could call the nocturne a song without words. So our melody line, our right hand, we imagine it's a singer's line. So where you may have heard the word cantabile, meaning in a singing style, it isn't only cantabile, it is we are a singer. And if you can sing, sing whilst you're playing, sing the right hand's melody. Because if you sing, you can't play unmusically. Chopin even told his students to listen to the opera and to the singers and to arias because this would help them develop a cantabile, a singing style. What does it mean as pianists? Well, we must listen to every leap, every twist, every turn, every step, feel it and express it in the music and how we play. So just listen to the opening bar and imagine my right hand is a singer. hear that beautiful cantar ballet, that opening rising sick, that vocal leap. In fact, let's do a little exercise to see, to feel how it feels to sing the different intervals. So I'm not a singer, but do it with me. La, 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 la. The third, the fourth, la, la, the fifth. La, la, the sixth. La, la. So that's our opening interval. Okay, so you need to feel that. So as I say, play your right hand and sing with it so you can feel that you are the singer. Let's just play the right hand opening bar or two and listen to what's happening in the music. We have our rising sixth. Now we meander down the hill to F, descending to E flat. Now the end of that phrase is a sigh. Leap, a vocal leap, and a sigh. Okay, with the left hand. Meandering down. So we've seen in the first bar a few features, a rising vocal leap, meandering down steps and a sigh. And this comes back throughout the piece. Second phrase, we have two vocal leaps, 
expanding. Can you hear how the singer made that ornament? I wish I could sing for you. In fact, I did try to find um, a soprano version of somebody singing this for us. I couldn't. However, I did find this. Have a little listen to this clip. I'll link this person's channel, this YouTube channel, in the description. Just have a listen. A singer chose this piece to make a song with. Isn't that amazing? Okay, let's listen to the first two phrases. Listen for the vocal leaps, the sighs. Phrase two, the leaps extending and some vocal ornamentation. So we've got started. Let's look a little bit at left hand. So it's made up of a three quaver figure, a bass note, which has, if you notice, we're, we're obviously pedals, but it has a staccato underneath. And that's gonna give us a feeling of separation from quaver two and three, but also imagine it's a cello that's plucking, so pizzicato with vibrato, so resonant. And then our chords, which float. The first chord, more important than the second, and voicing the top, so you hear the rising third, And so on. So pizzicato bass, resonant. So practice that for control. So you have the the the, the diminuendo between the two chords, but also voicing that top. Um, what you can imagine the actual chords are almost like a sigh but in reverse so it's sighing but up the way rather than in uh, right hand or it's uh, quite often um, if you've a slower over two notes the second note is less um, also, the low bass, E flat, and then up an octave, float, and then E flat, D. See, the low bass gives us stability and grounds us, and gives an expansive feel, so to support right hand solo, solo singing. So we have our tonic E flat major and now float. Very gentle, dolcissimo. Also passing through. So a touch of this harmony then passing through. Diminished and also a touch of chromaticism which we'll see developing later on. Actually, it's passing through with the left hand descending, driving us forward, opening up to expansive. Sigh. And it does resolve this time. The left hand, you can almost imagine these chords, are, they're like mini questions. music and Dante I think it's a good description the feeling of walking forward whilst stopping to notice beautiful things so maybe we're, it's a walking in a forest but stopping to notice beautiful things and that maybe is the feeling of the rubato that you will get And it 
resolves with the sigh. Let's look at phrase three. feeling of the phrases, the, 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 the ebb and flow, but all the, the being propelled forward whilst sighing, so all of those things inside the music. So we're floating. Can you hear the singing, the singer ornament, ornamentating? So float. but um, diminished. beautiful forest walk but we've come to a bluebell meadow we're moving on but with the pp we've seen something very beautiful a little bit ethereal dolcissimo and then the writ slowing down and taking it in Again. So first of all, you're moving forward, but then as you come to the F major and the PP, inhale with the beauty. And a magical colour. exaggerated but you get the idea and then our tempo diminished it's pleading it's opened up Here is a sort of, it's 
questioning, but then there's a certainty, a dramatic certainty. Feel the bass. Bar 12, before the crescendo, uh, drop and inhale. Surprise before the chromatic and the crescendo. So, um, as we move back to section A, we have some more chromaticism brought in. Ornament, ornamenting, basically, isn't it? to feel the all the suspensions but flowing through into section A. Section A with slight differences with ornamentation, a variation, like a theme and variations. And here we have an accent. Again with the slur, the down up of the wrist, the second one is less. It's a sigh, a shortened sigh, but it's a sigh. opening up with a crescendo. And there we have our developing chromaticism with our ornamental notes. Let's look ahead to the coda for a little moment. So we're in A flat major, but in the second inversion, and we have an E flat pedal. So an E flat bass going throughout, okay, for a lot of that line, about 25 onwards. And that means that we can float above. We are suspended above the E flat pedal. And it's asking a question. Magical colour. So this is a this is a singer, um, almost at lib. So or almost actually a, a little bit like a cadenza, like an improvisation. is improvising in this section and um, on my performance video which I'll of this piece which I'll, I'll link above one of my commenters put it was almost like I was improvising it back into life whilst I was playing it and I've just thought about that now and the whole piece with it being so much like a theme like the A theme the B theme that then gets reworked with um, ornaments with with variants with chromaticism um, it is almost like perhaps he did sit down and improvise it. That's what it sounds like. And it's certainly this line, it does do. So let's have another listen. Listen out for the magical, the PP bar with the magical colour, the, the rising E flat. And the down the steps and on the improvisatory nature of it. And you can, it's, it's, fairly, it's fairly rare that you will get the direction rubato from Chopin, but he's here. Um, and um, you can take your time, look around at the beauty on the walk. So let's listen to this line. C 
gives us that stability, ready to float. Now one of those magical moments in music. magical moment the dominant seventh and Chopin's put dolcissimo so as sweetly as possible and it's an ethereal magical colour here's our size so all the way throughout up to now um, the left hand has been in these three quaver figures. Bass note, separate, different sound with our slur. But when you get to bar 29, it's new. And that needs voicing. You need to hear the upper. That, the arch through that, so let's listen. We get to bar 30, con force with force, intensity, passion, you can let go. onwards actually with the stretto so uh, building speed um, it feels cadenza like it, it, it feels improvisatory doesn't it <laughs> this so it's not a mechanical it's it's um it's a lyrical cadenza smart sando so dying away let's look at the last two bars so we're in blissful home e flat major right hand has a little go at left hand, which is a nice touch, isn't it? Um, and the middle voice in um, left hand, the B flat crotchets, these need to sound a little bit like distant bells, little tolling bells at the entrance to heaven. most dolce sound that you can find. So, long pedal, practice the sound world that you're aiming for. rising bells like a bell like quality and then sink to the last chord so different different qualities of sound i hope that was helpful uh, things to take away imagine that you are walking through a beautiful forest and there are lots of delights to see and behold 
and whether that would be a sigh in the music, that theme, the sigh that comes everywhere, whether that's some ornamentation, a trill, a turn, um, some chromaticism, wh whatever, or whether it's a colour, whatever the feature is that you're looking around in nature, whether it's the bluebell forest, whether it's the sun glinting through the trees, these are the kind of things that you're holding up and enjoying as you journey through the piece. Uh, the other thing is, of course, practice singing with your right hand because a singer makes the notes, a singer cares for every interval, every phrase, every turn, every trill, every step, every leap. And that's what you need to do with your right hand. So you train yourself by singing with your playing and you will feel that your right hand will sing, not just cantabile, but you will, be, you will express the music like a singer would do. And finally, imagine with all the, um, the development and the variations on each of the sections that this is almost like an improvisation. Um, and you're discovering that when you play, it's almost like it's new every time you play. Discover the delights of how Chopin changes the A section and the B section. And it encompasses a whole world up till that delightful cadenza at the end um, and just enjoy the delights of Chopin the poet. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.